Hello everyone, this is Kevin Jones with North American Public Sector at Red Hat. Today I'm going to walk through a total rebuild of a Red Hat OpenSight platform cluster from start to finish. This is a case where you are either rebuilding or have lost your underclad and overclad and you need to do it all from scratch. Now what I'm going to start with first is uh, just showing you that my undercloud is indeed a fresh Red Hat Enterprise Linux install. It does have a uh, basic networking set up on the external network and the provisioning network, but there is no installation uh, currently. So I'm just showing you that the stack user has not even been created yet. Um, for the case of this, I am using a uh, set of Ansible playbooks that we in public sector have written to make ease of use of this. The other thing you'll notice is that a lot of this video is uh, sped up very quickly, sometimes 20x the speed. And that's just so you don't uh, feel like ripping your eyeballs out after sitting here watching standard out from an Ansible playbook. Um, so what's happening right here is we are just prepping the undercloud machine, which was a base rel system that we started with, with network enabled, and we're updating packages and uh, making sure that the thing has everything it needs to, to move forward with the installation. I've set up some configurations, so the undercloud.conf got configured, and as you go along, if you want to see specific commands, you can obviously pause the video to see what command got run or, or what the output was. Um, and what's happening right now is that it's taken that undercloud.conf that got set up, and it's actually running the OpenStack undercloud install command. And I'm just tailing the log at the bottom of the screen. So the top portion of the terminal, you see the Ansible playbook output that's happening. And the bottom portion is the tail of the log. And I'll use that bottom terminal session to show different things along the way. And so uh, this is all automated procedures. The other thing I'll say about this Ansible playbook is that it simply took the inst installation instructions from the ROS P director installation and usage guys and, and wrapped out those steps in Ansible. Um, so it's going through now and just doing some finishing touches. Very, very briefly, I showed the uh, ROSP director user interface just to show the nodes. You can see there's images in place locally. There are no templates yet. And uh, what's happening now is it's actually uploading the images and you can see an output of OpenStack image list from the undercloud there as they get uploaded. You can also see that the control plane network is in place and you saw the services get bumped there on the output. The next thing to show is that there are no uh, nodes yet. So I have not imported any bare metal nodes to this uh, undercloud yet. Some more services coming online there as you see on the output. The next thing is I've got this instack JSON file that defines what my bare metal nodes are. So I've got node five, node six, node seven, and node eight. The first three, five, six, and seven are uh, node IDs controllers zero through uh, two. And then the node eight gets a uh, compute zero profile. So right now, Ansible is just using IPMI to talk to those machines. It's pin tested them, that they're all responding, and now it's actually powering those machines off so that we can start with uh, them powered off. And you just briefly saw the director UI come up there. Um, and what's happening now in the playbook, you can see it's kicked off introspection. So not only did it import the nodes, but it automatically kicked off the introspection for me. The nodes all come online in Pixie Boot and um, pull down the introspection image. And this is just a simple process to actually inspect the hardware. If you've never seen a deployment before, it actually runs a little rel, does some hardware inspection, takes that data and puts it back into Swift on the undercloud so we can, we can utilize that data to make decisions. And then the last step you saw there was it cleaning the nodes. Just goes on to the nodes, boots them, wipes the disks, and gets them ready for installation. Now in 13, all the services are containerized and we have to have a place to store those containers. So I'm pulling them down from a local registry. Um, I got asked to do this in a disconnected fashion. So I've stood up a local registry in my lab. That's the 10.100.214 address you see there. And the process right now is actually pulling those images from that registry, put them on the underclouds registry, and it's gonna use that for deployment. So the undercloud is complete. It took uh, actually a about just under 15 minutes for that undercloud install command to run. It started at 22.03 system time and finished 22.22. What has happened now is that I've actually copied over the known working 
uh, templates that I had before. And so one of the requirements was, you know, known set of hardware, known set of templates. Can you do a total rebuild in a certain amount of time? And uh, that's what we're doing here. We have known hardware, known templates. And so the deployment is kicked off. It's actually moving through some of the initial phases. Um, OpenStack Director handles all of this for us. So Ansible has simply called the deploy.sh command that's sitting on my undercloud, which is just an OpenStack over cloud deploy with all my environment files. Um, you can see that the nodes themselves, node five, six, seven, and eight have uh, Nova instance UUIDs now at the bottom and they are deploying. So they're powered up and the first thing they do is uh, boot a little deploy image. They write Red Hat Enterprise Linux to the defined root disk. In this case, it's an NVMe drive on each node. And those machines are now actually active and are ready to be configured. So at first they had just the um, control plane network assigned to them, but now they are all coming online and are available. And the deployment now is proceeding for the configuration above and on top of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And what I'm waiting for now, so the, the deployment itself goes through five major steps. The first one kind of does some pre-configuration. Step two in OpenStack 13 is deploying Ceph for me. So on the bottom, you're actually seeing the output of Ceph Ansible. Uh, Red Hat OpenStack Platform direct, uh, Director 13 uses Ceph Ansible as the deployment mechanism for Ceph. And as it goes through, it's doing all the configurations on the node, the controllers. You can see it just completed there. And my controllers are the ones that are actually running all the Ceph services. So uh, what I'm going to do here is log into one of those nodes and show you that uh, Ceph is actually up and running at this point in the deployment. So I'm going to log on to node 5 and uh, sudo to root and just show you that Ceph is up and healthy at this point. So it's health OK, three monitors, which are my node 5, 6, and 7 and 12 OSD, so four apiece, are online already in Ceph. Just do a little pool output there to show that the OpenStack pools are in place and ready to go. Uh, in the rest of the phases here, you'll see me kind of pull director's interface up. So you can actually see status and director's interface as well if you, if you want a different way to visualize what's going on. And like I said, you can pause this video at any moment just to see these things in detail. And you can see the deployment just finished, 77 minutes uh, based on the time command. And my OpenStack Horizon is up. I'm going to log in first as a admin user, which gets created by default just to show you that things are up. And you'll see there's no domains uh, capability in Horizon just yet. So the next step that's going to happen is it's copying a couple guest images over to the undercloud, which we're going to upload. And it's actually going to kick off a post configuration deployment for me as well. So even though we have a cloud up and running, it's not completely useful yet because I don't have images in it. I don't have users. I haven't hooked the active, uh, set up the active directory domains just yet for use. So um, just doing an ls command on the guest images directory on, on my undercloud to see if they're there. Now they're all there. Um, and we just kicked off the overcloud customization. So that's an output of the log there that's happening. It's just creating a, an operator's project, uh, granting the, the roles to manage domains. So you can see my KJW3 domain that got added. Those are my active directory users being pulled in. I can add them or, or remove them as needed, set their permissions in Keystone and all of that. Um, the, so this deployment itself is, is tied to a Windows Server 2016 that's running in my lab environment for Active Directory and Director took care of the configuration for me. That was part of my templates. I'm just simply going in and, and picking those uh, couple groups I made called OpenStack Admins and Users and giving them the right permissions in Keystone so that when users that are in Active Directory authenticate to this cloud, they get put into the right places with the right permissions. So I've got a single project I'm going to create here for the AD users just to show that we can actually create networks and spin up machines, etc. The post configuration is actually working on the final images. 
that are being uploaded. And you can see the whole thing just completed there. So we have a full cloud with customizations and I'm just playing around with some of the permissions on this project. And what I'll show you next is actually walking in through uh, doing some operations in OpenStack, kind of one-on-one -on -one type operations. So we can see there's a RHEL image, Cirrus, and a CloudForms image in there. We can see there's networks already set up that got done by the post configuration script I have. I'm going to log in now as an actual Active Directory domain user, so myself with my account from Active Directory. You can see I have admin permissions through that OpenStack admin account or group in Active Directory, and now I'm going to the project and we're just going to create some things. So in my project, I only see the, the external network at first. So I'm going to create a router that we can use, uh, set the gateway to that public network. Once that's created, I'm going to create a private network that we can use to put virtual machines on. So I'll call that private 81. Set up a subnet for that private 81. And uh, as long as this doesn't conflict with anything else in your uh, data center that you need to get out to, then you're all good for whatever cider you want to choose. I've got the network now and I just need to add it at, at, with an interface on that router we created a, a minute ago and, and you'll see that that's all connected now. So we're, we're actually good to spin up some machines. So I'm going to pick this uh, Cirrus image to start and we're going to launch a couple machines off of that Cirrus image. Um, real quick, just going to import a key pair so when I create the images my credentials get injected into them. So we're going to create a zero. So I'm going to launch five of them. We're going to do it straight from image. We're going to pick a tiny flavor, put it on the private network to start, and uh, make sure my key pair in this default security group is chosen. When we move over to the instances page, we'll see these guys getting IPs and spawning, and as they come online, we'll be able to use them. The next thing I'm going to do is create one floating IP that I'm going to assign to the Serial stash one image, it's 192.168.1.73, and this is how we're going to be able to access this. Now you'll notice when I go to SSH here that I get no response at first. This is because the default security group, when a new project is created, does not allow ingress traffic from anything other than its own security group. So I'm just adding all ICMP, all TCP, and all UDP, and you can see now that I can log into that CRS1 machine and ping redhat.com. So all in all, this uh, time from me to start to finish was uh, just over two hours, and the individual components were the undercloud took about 15 minutes on the actual install command, and the overcloud took 77 minutes. Now you can actually improve those times uh, depending on the tuning of your director machine and its capabilities. In my case, I only have a four core Intel Nook that is my director and it would benefit heavily by more cores. So thank you for your time today and uh, I hope that you're as happy as I am that you didn't have to sit through all of those two hours in real time.